Hi, this is Leonard from Cosmic Sound and today we're coming to you from XPD. This is our external projects division. It's where we deal with a couple of things. First of all, education. So products for students, products for teachers and also for institutions. And all of our big installs are done from here as well. So we uh, keep a lot of products up here like large mixes and um, the team here actually look after venues and other sort of institutions uh, to set them up with the products they're looking for. The reason we're up here today is because I'm going to be talking to you about a new product out from Avid and it is Sibelius 7. Uh, this is Avid's notation software. It's used by many composers around the world to enter music into their computer. Um, it's also a very popular choice among students as well, so I'm going to be taking you through a few features of this new software and um, we're going to show you why you might want to get this program. Alright, so let's get into it. The first thing I want to talk about is there's been a few changes in the interface, predominantly to do with the menus. So before where you would have had a whole range of different things along the top here, um, what they've done is they've actually streamlined these quite a lot. So there's only a few things in here, your normal file menus there. There's only a couple of things you can do in the edit menu and the same with the rest of them. What they've replaced them with are these tabs um, along the top of the actual Sibelius window. And we've got one here, um, which is the file tab. And this, in this, this one, you can actually enter all the details of your score. Um, if we move along, you've got the home tab. Um, there's a few things you can do in here from all your cut, copy, paste type actions. Um, you can actually add and remove instruments as well and change them if you want to do that. Um, adding bars is also done from here. And there's a few other bits as well, which I won't go into. Um, if we go across to the note input area, we've got an actual thing to input notes and this will actually if you click it bring up your little note keypad here i'll just open the second one so we'll get rid of that um, you can do your tuplets from here as well um, you do um, enharmonic respellings which is actually a really nice thing to have that in a very ex accessible place um, there's a few other things going on in here as well which we won't get into notations this is really good as well you've now got um, a full strip where you can actually add things like slurs, crescendo marks, trills, any sort of articulations that you might want to do. Um, also changing clefs and key signatures is a lot easier. So just to show you this, um, if I wanted to say uh, change a clef, all I need to do is select bass clef and just click it where I want that to occur and it'll do that. We'll just undo that. A um, few other ones in here for adding text. We've got playback as well. Um, layout, so you can actually change a few things very easily now, such as the margins and the setup of your page, which is really, really nice. Um, appearance as well, we can change. We've got a separate section for editing the parts. Review and view. Now this is where you can activate all of your different toolbars, which is great as well. So say the old transport window, if I still want to see that, I can turn that on from here. So next I'd like to talk to you a bit about the sounds. Now this has been a problem with a lot of notation software for many years is that the sounds aren't really that good. So when you're actually trying to compose your score and you're playing it back, it can actually put you off a bit and make you think that you're writing bad music when you might not necessarily be. So what Avid have done with this new version of Sibelius is they've put a lot more effort into the sounds that they give you to reproduce your music as you're writing it, and they're actually a lot better. Um, you've got a pretty big library here from all your keyboard instruments, fully full orchestral instruments, strings, winds, and brass. Um, there's a really wide selection of percussion instruments that you can choose from as well. Um, you also get band instruments for writing for jazz bands or whatever else you might want to do, uh, choirs, there's quite a lot of different instruments in this thing and the way they're all structured is really good as well so if you wanted to actually uh, introduce articulations or dynamics they all play back really nicely. So I'm just going to play you a few sounds now to give you an idea of what the instruments uh, in the collection sound like. So first of all piano, certainly a big improvement over the last edition. Um, I'll just load a couple of others here. These are just all um, demo scores that come with the program. So we've got full orchestra here. one other example. So these are some of the band orientated sounds that come with Sibelius. So 
So the other thing you'll probably notice while I've been playing these scores is there's a few different ways that the notation itself can look. For example, we're looking at a piece of jazz. Um, you can use the handwritten look. We've got tablature we can actually have here as well, all kinds of different marks. We can have chord symbols, anything we want. If we go back to a classical score, um, you'll see that the it's the engraved style looks completely different, um, much more traditional. Um, there's also a couple of things we can do with Sibelius that are pretty out there as well. So if we want to get into advanced styles of notation, um, Sibelius is completely up to it. Um, as you can see here, there are a number of different symbols that you can introduce into your scores. Sibelius can also import graphics. So if you wanted to use um, your own custom graphics, especially if you wanted to make scores that had graphic elements in them, um, as many composers are doing today, then you can certainly do that by just loading them in as an image file and incorporating them into your score. So another great thing about Sibelius is its use of text. Um, now if you're wanting to use lyrics with your music, um, you can do that very easily and there's a really intuitive text system that enables you to position each um, syllable to each note. So it works really well. There's a number of other things you can do with text as well. You can pretty much place text wherever you want. And the other thing is that the dynamic system works really well by simply uh, creating an expression mark and we can put it wherever we want and then just enter a letter, so an F for forte. Um, and then when we get out of that, that'll actually just create a forte mark which will actually play back as well. So it'll convert what you've written into MIDI and play it back as a dynamic marking or whatever you've done. So another thing to mention with Sibelius um, is how it works with other software. Um, it is completely rewire functional, so you can actually connect it to any door that you might want. It's made by Avid, so it integrates very well with Pro Tools if you're a Pro Tools user. Um, the other really great thing about it is it's completely 64-bit compatible. Um, the reason this is really good is if you're using pretty big sample-based um, libraries like the Sibelius Player, or indeed if you wanted to use Contact, uh, East-West, um, VSL, any sort of different symphonic library, um, you're going to want to address probably more than 4 gig of RAM and in a 32-bit operating environment this is obviously impossible. So Sibelius is fully 64-bit compatible, enables you to address more than 4 gig of RAM um, and work with pretty big sample libraries which is a great feature. Of course it's totally VST and AU compatible as well so any of those plugins that you might want to use um, you're free to integrate them with Sibelius as you wish. Alright, so I'm just going to take you through just a very brief demo of just how to get Sibelius going and a few things that you can do with it. So if we just create a new project, we'll get this Sibelius Quick Start Wizard that pops up. This is really great for actually setting up uh, your, your score. So let's say we wanted to work with a string quartet. I click on string quartet. Here I can set things up, so for example if I want this to scroll, uh, if I want this to be a landscape document, I can very easily change it to that so it looks a bit better when you're working with a smaller number of instruments. Um, other things I can do in here, I can change the time signature to start it so we can start in 3-4 for example. Um, I can actually start with um, an anacrusis, so if I do this I can say I want to start with uh, one crotchet before the first bar. Um, I can also insert tempo text here, so you can um, customize what you want to do. We can um, enter it in any language we want as well. We can do it in German. So we want something that's very slow and I'm going to create a metronome mark of 50 beats per minute. Uh, now I go create and there is the score very simply created for me. A few things I can do here as well is I can change how it appears. So I can either look at it on the page like I, like I am right now or if I click this little button down here this is what's called panorama. So it just gives me a long scrolling score which is a lot better when you're actually trying to write. A um, couple of other things. So let's say I'd made a mistake and I actually want this to now be a piano quintet. Very easy for me to add another instrument so I'll say I want to add a piano. We add that to the score and I can then move it down to the bottom and hit OK and now I've got a piano part added to my score. Um, to get data in there's a number of different ways of doing this. You can actually play it in. Um, there's a step record system very sim similar to what you'd have in Finale if you're used to that um, or you can manually enter note data like this. So really easy to get data in. Um, other things you can do, say you put that note there and you want it to be up an octave, very easy to hold command and up, we'll move it up the octave. Um, another cool thing that we've got here as well is you can change enharmonic spellings pretty easily as well. So let's say I was to enter a C sharp here, but I actually wanted that to be a D flat instead. Um, I can very easily go to re-spell and it'll convert that to a D flat. 
Um, a few other great things I like about Sibelius is entering articulations and dynamics. So let's say I want all of these notes here to be in a slur. I can very easily select them like so. And I'm just going to drop over here to the Notations tab and I'm going to create a slur and it automatically creates a slur and balances over the top of the notes that I've got selected. So other things we can do are actually enter dynamic markings as well and this is very easily done as I mentioned before uh, Command E and then all we do is just type in whatever you might want to see. So we could make this first note a sforzando. Um, we could then have a decrescendo which I can select from here and drop down to piano right next to it and you'll see the other thing as well as it actually balances everything and lines all of your markings up so you don't have to sit there and manually drag things around uh, it's really really good um, maybe if we wanted to add a little bit of text to this as well there are heaps of different things that we can do so we actually have a style thing here as well so we can choose any number of different things um, we might want to uh, create a different tempo marking uh, we might want to change metronome marking we can enter general text so well, let's pick one of these and we're going to say play twice and it puts it in a nice little box up the top um, spaces it out evenly for you there are heaps of different options with Sibelius you can really do anything that you have in your mind so this is the great thing about the program is you can get it all down on paper and then obviously have musicians play it for you so another thing you can do that's probably pretty obvious is print your scores and Sibelius enables you to do a few different things here um, the great thing is you can extract parts from your music so previously what people would have had to do is create a score um, and then actually manually create all their parts. With programs like Sibelius and Finale as well, um, you can extract all the parts very easily and have them printed out to give to your musicians. So it's not limited to printing as well. Um, what we can do here if we go into the file menu and export, we've got a number of options for how we can export it. And commonly you may need to send parts or a score to somebody else and you can do this as a PDF or whichever format you want to. Makes it very easy for anybody to open and obviously non-editable as well if you're worried about your music being stolen. So one other thing I'll just mention briefly, there's a couple of um, options in here as well for educators. Um, these are really great tools. If you go into your file menu and down the bottom to teaching, um, there are a few templates in here that you can use for uh, teaching your students. So if we go into here, we want to use teaching and learning materials. So you can choose what to put on each sheet and the page size. Um, let's say we want to only use material for individuals and we only want it to be on paper or let's say we want to add at the computer as well. It'll go through and it'll find all of the worksheets that are relevant to what I've searched for here. And we can go into say the first one, elements of music. Uh, let's say dynamics. Name of dynamic markings. And then I can actually enter in any data in here that I might want to specifically for that worksheet. And then it will produce the templates at the end for me to give to the student and also an answer key as well. So absolutely perfect for anybody that has students. Um, as I've said before, it's, it's a great program for a number of different types of people. Whether you're actually a professional composer or whether you're a student, it's a really great program. Um, if there's actually a number of different pricing schemes as well, so you can buy it as a normal license. Um, you can buy it as a student license, which actually gives you four years of free upgrades as well. Um, there's, there's a single education license for teachers and institutions, and there's also a multi-seat license you can get if you're actually from an education institution and wanted to set up a Sibelius lab. Uh, you certainly have that option to, available to you as well. So we've been taking a look at the all new Sibelius 7 from Avid today. There's a lot that goes on inside this program that I can't cover in the short time this video is going to go for, but needless to say it's a feature packed program and essential for anybody that is a student, a teacher uh, or a composer of any type. It's also the perfect program to have in school, so if you have a, a computer lab Sibelius 7 is sold in multi-license version and it's absolutely perfect for any school. Um, we carry stock of all of these different versions in both of our Osborne Park and Cannington stores. For education, um, please check in with our external projects division um, or check us out online at cosmic.com.au.